Welcome everyone to Product One's technical web series. Today we are looking at Creo Simulate assemblies. So the last video we actually showed how you would go about doing a structural analysis for a single part, but now we are actually going to look at how do you analyze an assembly. So this is what we have today. So just like before you go into your simulate remember this is integrated to your modeling package that means that you can move in and out between uh, the two without obviously changing the software or importing parts the significance of that if i make a change to my 3d part or parts they will obviously update here as well and i can make some modification as well in my simulate area or simulate environment without obviously hampering the design component on the other side that's on Creo 4. So this is what we have at this stage. I'm having this beam here and I've got a couple of welds. So whenever you've got a situation like this, you will always interrogate the relationship between those two components or, or between the components. So what we have here is basically a legend that stipulates in terms of each and every part or every relationship or geometry will be assigned a particular color. As you can see here, we've got a gray color that's signifying solid geometry and the E areas that we're going to focus on is actually these ones here. We're going to be focusing on what we call connectivity between parts. So as you can see here, we've got a part, I think it's burgundy or pink, that signifies bonded surfaces. We've got connected surfaces that will be denoted as yellow. And then we've got the rigid links that we done as, I think it's brown. All right, so now, now that I've actually seen that, if I say apply, this is what I have. And you can definitely see from this point that this here, I'm talking about that surface, it actually looks like it's bonded. That means that it's like it's glued onto the surface. And that's not necessarily true because of these plates are actually held together by a weld that exists in that surface. Okay. So I also have the same scenario in here. So what makes it a lot easier is when you take away the actual plates as well. So I know for a fact in this particular scenario that this surface here does not belong here because of that that would mean that the plate is actually glued in there those surfaces are not going to move away from each other and we know that there's going to be bolts that actually hold the two surfaces together the same applies here we don't need that area and also here we don't need that area in the middle okay so how do you fix a situations like this so in simulate you do have what we call contact interfaces or component interfaces rather i'm gonna choose free for this case and i can pick surface to surface so this is what you do with uh, this i'm gonna select the first surface and the second surface to denote the fact that those are supposed to be free that means that they are not connected at all but the welds are the ones that are going to be connecting that so what I'm going to do now is repeat the same procedure again for this plate and that plate. So I'll just show you this again before I complete the process in a sense that when I go back, as you can see now, there's no joint here in the middle and also here, there's no joint in that, in that space. So that seems to be true. So I will now try and replicate all of those in the other areas. By the way, you don't have to select surfaces. You can also select uh, components. So I can say component to component. I can select this part and that part to make it to be free. And I can also choose uh, which other surface that's actually missing. Okay, this one here. I will say this surface and that surface. It will tell you if at all there is already a component interface. I'll just interrogate this geometry for one last time and exactly as I want it to be, these are the, the wells that are representing the connections. And of course, I can bring back the solid geometry and we can take it from there. Then the question is, how do I link now this plate and that plate? The answer is answered by what we call fasteners. These are basically 
fasteners inside Creo Simulate. It's not your normal fasteners that you have on your part. So if I select those two geometries or those two edges, I can actually pick here now that, listen, I want to take maybe a certain material. Of course, you can assign this, uh, your material for your own bolts as well. And then it will tell you that, listen, whatever connection actually exists there will be ignored. It will obviously take what you have in terms of the bolt. And that's basically the bolt connection. So now I can replicate this. In fact, I can even call this fastener number two if I like. And then what I will do is I will select the same edges but on different hole. And this is what I have. I'll just take this now and say this is fastener number three. And just finish off by selecting that area. Okay. Last but not least, we have now fastener number four. Fastener number four, it will be that surface and that edge here as well. Okay, now that we've actually done this, we will do what we've done uh, uh, last time where you apply loads and constraints and then you analyze this. Okay, so that is actually very easy. There is a variety of constraints, of course, that you can actually use. We're just going to just pick a simple displacement constraint. It's as if like uh, this is be between walls or whatever. And then we'll apply a load. And our load is actually going to act on this particular surface. So what I will actually do is I'm going to make this 10, that's a kilonewton. And when I say preview, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And now I can apply my material. So in terms of applying material, as we showed before, is I can actually say, oh, let's make it steel. I can even assign it to the entire assembly as well, just to make things a lot quicker. All right, I'm not going to refine the mesh. I think I showed a little bit of that last time. I'm not going to do that, but it depends on what you're looking for, which areas that are of huge concern. You can actually make those elements a lot finer or a lot smaller, and you can even exclude area, any other areas. So I'm just going to call this FEA 101. And once I'm actually done with this, I'm going to now start analyzing this. Just like I've done on the previous video, I can actually see what's happening in my structural analysis results. And just like that, this is what I have. So I can, of course, show my results. I can even say show them as deformed or even as animated. And that's basically it's how you analyze in assembly. Okay. So this is what you have here, and if you can look at what we've got now, is whenever this plate is actually moving, it doesn't move away from this, it actually drags it along, and the stress or the load is transferred to the other areas because we've got fastness, and you can even see areas that might be of huge concern, and this is how you would interrogate an assembly. So, of course, you can tweak in terms of how your assembly or how your your model looks like and you can even exaggerate the deformation but this shows you what you can do with component interface fasteners inside Creo Simulate and that's it for this time uh, until uh, we meet again probably next year this is the last uh, video recording for this year please enjoy your holidays don't forget to subscribe and like the video safe travels until next time thank you very much